Chinese money plant dropping leaves left, right and centre? Then worry not, you're not alone. This has to be one of the most common problems in the houseplant community. I mean, look at mine. Yellowing or even blackening leaves ready to fall off the plant at the next slightest change in wind. No, 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 not that kind of wind. I'm going to share with you all the Chinese money plant's dirty secrets on why it always does this and the things you can do to stop it. So let's have a look at my plant. What's the main thing you notice about it? Yes, you got it. All the nasty leaves are located near the bottom of the plant and this is actually perfectly normal. Ugly, yes, but normal. This is when you shouldn't be too concerned. You see, Mr. Chinese money plant has a problem. A big problem. For some reason that I can't seem to fathom, he has a hard time keeping hold of his oldest leaves as he's growing new ones. I mean, why? Now this is the crucial bit, so quieting down the kids for just a minute. As long as there are new leaves coming out of the top, you've still got a happy chappy on your hands. And this is exactly the situation with mine. New leaves at the top, but losing leaves at the bottom. I know it's supremely annoying, but it's just something you've got to accept with this plant, I'm afraid. It's part of the natural aging process apparently, so just like some of us can't hold on to our foliage as we age, he can't hold on to all of his either. If, however, you've got yellowing leaves at the top that are then falling off, then you've got problems, and we'll come back to why that might be in a jiffy. Now, if it wasn't for its one saving grace, this guy would be heading straight for the trash, because honestly, I really don't want a lanky specimen in my house looking all silly. It's embarrassing. I'm trying to keep up the illusion that I know what I'm doing after all. Only joking, of course. I've got mad skills, which all of my plants would testify to. Won't you? Anyway, what's its saving grace, I hear you cry? That it's a horny bugger and regularly gives birth to little babies in the same pot. Yes, it's those offspring that fill in the bare space at the bottom of the plant and gives the illusion that all is right in the land of Chinese money plant. Without those, this guy would just look silly and would soon be kicked to the curb, believe me. But look, Mr. Sheffield, even the babies have yellow leaves. Yep. It seems even the little guys can't hold on to their leaves, just like their mother. The trick then is to give the whole ecosystem the resources it needs to produce as many babies as possible so they can keep filling in the gaps. And no, we're not talking about Viagra. We're talking about giving it the room it needs to do its uh, thing, so to speak. It needs to live in a pot big enough to spread its wings. Have a look at mine. The pot is a little bit too small for the size of the plant, so what I could do is shifting the family from its terrace to a semi-detached house. Now, when it comes to repotting time, you don't want to mess around too much. It's like taking the little one to bed when they've fallen asleep in the car on the way home. Be nice and gentle and no one is the wiser. Drop them on their head while you're climbing the stairs and all hell breaks loose. What my rather odd analogy is trying to say is to be gentle with the roots when repotting, otherwise this can slow down the growth of the new babies. So you've got a plant like mine that has a bunch of yellow, brown, grey and black leaves. What do you do? Cut them off as soon as they show their face? Honestly, there's no great rush if you can take the pain. They start yellow, and as they get darker and turn black, they fall off naturally. So that's exactly what I tend to do. Leave it to do its thing and tidy up the scrag ends when they've fallen off, rather than fighting to pull off a yellow leaf that's not quite ready to leave. And this is exactly why my plant looks like the mess it does. Honestly, it is. I am caring for it correctly. Look, you can tell by the health of the leaves at the top, okay? So what's happening if you've got yellow leaves all over that eventually fall off the plant? Well, if there is a general fading all over with the yellowing, then this is most likely too much sun. Yes, our friend is particularly sensitive to direct sun. He really doesn't like it. I trialed keeping this guy on my shelving unit in front of my east facing window for a few weeks and he really wasn't best pleased with me. Threw his dummy out of the pram and refused to grow. I learned my lesson and put him among some new friends on my fireplace half, well away from the window. Much happier. The key to plant care is to have a little think about where they naturally live. Don't panic, it's not that arduous. And anyway, I'm here to spoon feed you it in this case. So this guy was plucked from his home in tropical Asia where he tended to hang out growing on the floor under the canopy of larger trees. What does this mean? That he gets dappled sun at best. No sun is beating down on him all day. So it's fair to assume that he's really not used to it. Just like a Sheffield that is allergic to the sun, so is this guy. So don't let direct sun rays touch the leaves. He will not quite literally down tools for you. 
Now that doesn't mean you can chuck this guy under the stairs for Harry Potter to look after him. Sure, he'll appreciate the company, but he won't like the lack of lights. Just because he gets dappled light in the jungle, don't be fooled. This is still much brighter than in your home. He still needs some good light, medium light at the very least. Not getting this and he won't be rewarding you with new leaves at the top. The sweet spot is a place in your home where you can see a decent amount of the sky, but the sun never touches the leaves. For me, this is on my fireplace half. Well, not quite actually. It's actually a little too dark for him here, so I do have this sancy grow light shining over him, and he's happy as Larry. This turns this low light spot into a medium light spot, which is good enough. Affiliate link in the description, by the way, with a 15% discount. Now, you'll probably notice that this guy loves to turn its leaves to face the light. Having it facing in one direction, and all the leaves will end up facing that way. This is fine if you just leave it there of course, but if you're planning on moving things around in the future, you might want to consider rotating him every so often. Look at mine, all the leaves saying hello in that same direction because I don't rotate him enough like a good plant parent, but I'll do so from now on, okay? Now like I said, these guys like to hang out in the jungle where it's nice and warm and humid. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Well, this means they don't like to dry out too much. They like to have moist soil. Moist, not wet. And I'll come back to why this is key in a bit. Forget to water him for weeks at a time and guess what? Drop leaves are plenty. Just look how delicate those petioles are. If the central stem is drying out because of a lack of water in the soil, then those petioles will weaken and the weight of the leaves will send them to the floor. So don't leave it with dry soil for weeks, but also don't keep it in wet soil all the time. This would be a disaster. A word of caution about pots too. The one thing that makes a Chinese money plant more prone to underwatering is keeping it in an unglazed terracotta pot. I know they look great and you're probably a big fan, but it's not really worth the hassle in my opinion. I've tried it and they just don't do well unless you can keep on top of the watering. And honestly, I've not got time to be doing this every other day. They're too porous with the water in the soil seeping from the pot too quickly. They much prefer living in plastic nursery pots with drainage holes. You can of course glaze your terracotta pot and I've got the glaze I use on my pots listed in my Amazon store link below. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. I actually used to have another Chinese money plant and it ended up teaching me a very valuable lesson. That watering blindly is a plant's idea of hell. The Sheffield May plant's mantra is to always check the soil before watering. I actually repeat this in my head as I'm going to sleep. I stupidly didn't do this for mine and ended up overwatering it. What happened? The leaves burst. It looked hideous. I was ashamed and I was disowned. From that point on, it was on a one-way train to Uglyville until I finally sent him away to live on a farm. Shh, his mate doesn't know he's actually worm food and he won't be happy if he finds out. But Mr. Sheffield, you just said they hail from tropical Asia and they have monsoons over there. Surely they get rained on for months at a time. It's a good point actually. Look, the difference is that there, they're not confined to a little plastic pot where they end up swimming in a watery soil mixture from when you water them every single day. No, rain is able to freely run away. That's my assumption anyway. If you've got a different theory, then let me know. The proof is in the pudding anyway. Just look at my plant as evidence why you shouldn't water your plant too often. Poor thing. So how can you tell when the soil is dry, I hear you cry? By whipping out Mr. Sheffield's favorite tool in the whole wide world and this channel's number one affiliate link, the moisture meter, probe the soil and water when it's transitioning into the dry zone. Simples. Seriously, it really is that simple. It's the best way to conquer your fear of watering plants. It changed my life all those years ago. Now, overwatering becomes much more problematic if your plant is living in the wrong type of soil. Don't stick it in just compost or just topsoil. It's much too dense and the roots will suffocate. You need perlite or something else to lighten the load. Root rot comes from a lack of oxygen around the roots rather than just too much water. And perlite does a great job of allowing the roots to breathe. I recently switched to Cybersoil from Cybertanica to help stop me getting attacked by fungus gnats and it got a mix for pretty much any type of houseplant on their website so you can't go wrong and you can get a 10% discount with my affiliate link down below. Happy shopping! So Mr Chinese money plant was happily living with his family 
basking in the lovely warm temperatures of tropical Asia when it was abruptly taken from his home and made to live in your home. If you're unlucky enough to live somewhere with cold winters, then you might notice this leaf drop problem is bigger in winter. Well, the chances are your friend is suffering from abrupt temperature changes in your home. He won't like going from warm to cold five times a day. He'll get all moody and chuck his toys down the stairs. Basically, this means keeping him away from windows, doors, vents, and anything else that will blow cold air on him. Luckily for me, this fireplace has been capped so there isn't a draft coming down blowing on him. If there was, then he'd be in a world of trouble, believe me. Well, actually, I would be the one in trouble because I'll be the one cleaning up his mess. Even a windowsill might be a problem in the winter. I know he sounds like a needy so-and-so, but the cold air coming from the window especially behind a closed curtain, might upset him. Consider moving him somewhere more consistent when it's cold. And for your next viewing pleasure, check out this video where I talk about nine common mistakes you should avoid to instantly improve your Chinese money plan. And don't forget to subscribe.